So this week, the U.S. Department of Justice boasted about using the Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Act, or FACE Act, which was adopted back in the 90s when Bill Clinton was president. And it really is laid dormant for most of that time. But the Biden administration has used it unlike any other administration. Well, they were boasting on Monday about bringing 24 cases against 55 defendants, resulting in 23 convictions since January of 2021. That was among updates that came uh, during a briefing by Attorney General Merrick Garland uh, and the Reproductive Rights Task Force that the Justice Department created back in July of 2022. We established this task force as a whole of department effort to closely scrutinize these new complex and widespread threats to reproductive health for any infringements on federal protections. As the Attorney General has highlighted, we have not hesitated to act to vindicate those protections, be it through affirmative litigation, the Department's ongoing FACE Act enforcement, and other work advising and defending the actions of federal agencies. That was the Associate Attorney General Vanita Gupta on Monday. Considering how pro-life women centers are 22 times more likely to be attacked than an abortion facility, The Department of Justice efforts only make it all the more clear that justice under this administration is not blind and the tools of justice are being weaponized. Join me now to talk about this. Ben Johnson, senior reporter and editor at The Washington Stand, who has written on this. Ben, thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Pleasure to be with you as always. 24 cases. That may not sound like much, but it's notable, right? It really is. This prosecution spree by the Biden administration is a massive uptick in the criminalization of the pro-life movement since Dobbs. Uh, Biden, as you mentioned, has prosecuted 24 cases, but that's in less than three years. To put that in perspective, in the 10 years before Biden took office, the Obama and Trump administrations combined only prosecuted 17 FACE Act cases. So this is a massive increase in just a very few years, uh, and it is no coincidence it's happened since Roe versus Wade was overturned. Now, Ben, in some of these cases, we've seen uh, aggressive, um, I would say overly aggressive enforcement and uh, overuse of force, have we not? Oh, certainly. Uh, in many of these cases, frankly, the the uh, crime underlying the charges have been something akin to the 1960 sit-in movement or the civil rights movement. Uh, they would be virtually indistinguishable from that kind of peaceful pro-life activity, uh, both of them, of course, protesting laws that deny people's humanity. When you look at uh, the cases that they're bringing, these are pretty hardened criminals, as you can imagine. One of them is an 87-year-old concentration camp survivor who's facing a year in prison and a $10,000 fine. One of them was a Franciscan monk who was sentenced to six years, uh, six months, I should say, in a different kind of a cell. Uh, there are dozens of FACE Act prosecutions against standard people, people you would see in your churches on a Sunday morning. Uh, in uh, one case alone, there are 11 pro-life people, some of them in their uh, 60s and 70s, who are facing 11 years in prison, a $350,000 fine, again, for something that's akin to a civil rights sit-in. And not all of them, by the way, are churchgoers or Christians or religious at all. Uh, one of the uh, groups, there were nine members of a group called the Progressive Anti-Abortion Uprising. Uh, it's a secular group. They were protesting in front of a, an abortion facility in Washington, D.C. One man decided to cut a, a, a plea bargain with the prosecution, entered a guilty plea, and uh, his guilty plea ended up in a 10-year prison sentence. Of course, we know in uh, the case of, for example, a transgender activist who attacked a uh, pro-life uh, organization, he was acting out of his pro-abortion convictions, the Justice Department uh, decided to uh, recommend zero jail time for him. So this is not equal justice by any stretch of the imagination. So let's talk about that a little bit, because I, I noted in the intro that pro-life women's centers are 22 times more likely to be attacked than abortion facilities. What, what are we seeing on that front in terms of the DOJ pursuing those crimes? Well, that came up in a hearing with uh, Chip Roy, a a confrontation that he had with Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights, Kristen Clark, in the DOJ. Uh, Clark mentioned many times that she's now reaching out to pro-life groups to try and increase the prosecution there. Uh, Chip Roy mentioned on on the floor that the most recent count under this administration, you have 
prosecutions overwhelmingly targeting pro-life people, uh, despite the fact that, as you mentioned, pro, pro-life um, organizations are much more likely, 22 times more likely to be targeted. The current rate, according to him, is about 35 to 1 under the Biden administration. So there's clearly a difference in enthusiasm for prosecuting pro-life sidewalk counselors. Uh, at that Monday meeting that I wrote about uh, for the Washington Stand, the Assistant Attorney General Vanita Gupta, who is a, a left-wing activist with a background in the Obama administration as well, has promised the DOJ is going to continue to prosecute pro-life advocates, and this is a quote, creatively and relentlessly. So we're going to see more of this uh, justice uh, being more of the Justice Department activity focused against pro-life activity. Uh, and that uh, that essentially is what we're going to see uh, as the thrust, despite the fact that there is this massive imbalance. They've made the imbalance even worse. Amazing. Uh, ben, thanks so much for uh, for joining us. And I encourage people to uh, to check out your article at The Washington Stand. Always great to see you. Likewise. Thank you so much.